Untouchable is a novel by Mulk Raj Anand published in 1935. The novel established Anand as one of India's leading English authors. One, the book was inspired by his aunt's experience when she had a meal with a Muslim woman and W is treated as an outcast by her family. Two, three, the plot of this book, Anand's first, revolves around the argument for eradicating the caste system. Four, it depicts a day in the life of Baka, a young, sweeper, who is, untouchable, due to his work of cleaning latrines. Mulk Raj Anand, the 12th of December 1905 to the 28th of September 2004, was an Indian writer in English, recognized for his depiction of the lives of the poorer castes in traditional Indian society. One of the pioneers of Indo-Anglian fiction, he, together with R. K. Narayan, Ahmad Ali and Raja Rao, was one of the first India-based writers in English to gain an international readership. Anand is admired for his novels and short stories, which have acquired the status of classics of modern Indian English literature, they are noted for their perceptive insight into the lives of the oppressed and for their analysis of impoverishment, exploitation and misfortune. 1, 2, 3, he became known for his protest novel Untouchable, 1935, followed by other works on the Indian poor such as Cooley, 1936, and Two Leaves in a Bud, 1937. 4. He is also noted for being among the first writers to incorporate Punjabi and Hindustani idioms into English. 5. And was a recipient of the civilian honor of the Padma Bhushan. 6. Plot Summary. Edit. Set in the North Indian cantonment town Bulisha, Untouchable presents a day in the life of a young Indian sweeper named Baka. The son of Laka, head of all of Bulisha's sweepers, Baka is intelligent but naive, humble yet vain. Over Baka's day, various major and minor tragedies occur, causing him to mature and turn his gaze inward. By the end of the novel, Anand makes a compelling case for the end of untouchability because it is an inhumane, unjust system of oppression. He uses Baka and the people populating the young man's world to craft his argument. Baka's day starts with his father yelling at him to get out of bed and clean the latrines. The relationship between the father and son is strained, in part due to Baka's obsession with the British, in part because of Baka's laziness. Baka ignores his father but eventually gets up to answer the demands of a high caste man that wants to use the bathroom. This man is Chirat Singh, a famous hockey player. At first, Singh also yells at Baka for neglecting his cleaning duties. However, the man has a changeable personality. It isn't long before he instructs Baka to come to see him later in the day so he can gift the young sweeper with a prized hockey stick. An overjoyed Baka agrees. High on his good fortune he quickly finishes his morning shift and hurries home, dying of thirst. Unfortunately, there is no water in the house. His sister Sohini offers to go fill the water bucket. At the well, Sohini must wait behind several other outcasts also queued up. Also waiting for water is Galabo, mother of one of Baka's friends and a jealous woman. She hates Sohini and is just barely stopped from striking the young woman. A priest from the town temple named Pundit Kali Nath comes along and helps Sohini get water. He instructs her to come to clean the temple later in the day. Sohini agrees and hurries home with the water. Back at home Laka fakes an illness and instructs Baka to clean the town square and the temple courtyard in his stead. Baka is wise to the wily ways of his father but cannot protest. He takes up his cleaning supplies and goes into town. His sweeping duties usually keep him too busy to go into town, and so he takes advantage of the situation by buying cigarettes and candies. As Baka eats his candies, a high caste man brushes up against him. The touched man did not see Baka because the sweeper forgot to give the untouchables call. The man is furious. His yelling attracts a large crowd that joins in on Baka's public shaming. A traveling Muslim vendor in a horse and buggy comes along and disperses the crowd. Before the touched man leaves he slaps Baka across the face for his impudence and scurries away. A shocked Baka cries in the streets before gathering his things and hurrying off to the temple. This time, he did not forget the untouchable's call. At the temple, a service is in full swing. It intrigues Baka, who eventually musters up the courage to climb up the stairs to the temple door and peer inside. He's only standing there for a few moments before a loud commotion comes from behind him. It is Sohini and Pundit Kali Nath, who is accusing Sohini of polluting him. As a crowd gathers around, Baka pulls his sister away. Crying, she tells him that the priest sexually assaulted her. A furious Baka tries to go back to confront the priest, but an embarrassed and ashamed Sohini forces him to leave. Baka sends his sister home, saying he will take over her duties in town for the rest of the day. Distraught over the day's events, Baka wanders listlessly before going to a set of homes to beg for his family's daily bread. 
No one is home, so he curls up in front of a house and falls asleep. A sadhu also begging for food comes and wakes him. The owner of the house Baka slept in front of comes out with food for the sadhu. Seeing Baka, she screams at him and refuses to give him food. She finally agrees to give him some bread in exchange for him sweeping the area in front of her house. As Baka sweeps, the woman tells her young son to relieve himself in the gutter where Baka is cleaning so he can sweep that up too. A disgusted Baka throws down the broom and leaves for his house in the outcasts, colony. Back at home, it's only Laka and Sohini. Raka, Baka's younger brother, is still out collecting food. Baka tells his father that a high caste man slapped him in the streets. Sensing his son's anger, Laka tells him a story about the kindness of a high caste doctor that once saved Baka's life. Baka is deeply moved by the story but remains upset. Soon after story time, Raka comes back with food. A ravenous Baka starts to eat but then is disgusted by the idea of eating the leftovers of the high caste people. He jumps up and says he's going to the wedding of his friend Ramcharan's sister. At Ramcharan's house, Baka sees his other friend, Choda. The two boys wait for Ramcharan to see them through the thicket of wedding revelers. Ramcharan eventually sees his friends and runs off with them despite his mother's protestations. Alone, Choda and Ramcharan sense something is wrong with their friend. They coax Baka to tell them what's wrong. Baka breaks down and tells them about the slap and Sohini's assault. Ramcharan is quiet and embarrassed by Baka's tale, but Choda is indignant. He asks Baka if he wants to get revenge. Baka does but realizes revenge would be a dangerous and futile endeavor. A melancholic atmosphere falls over the group. Chota attempts to cheer Baka up by reminding him of the hockey game they will play later in the day. This reminds Baka that he must go and get his gift from Chirat Singh. Baka goes to Chirat Singh's house in the barracks, but cannot tell if the man is home. Reluctant to disturb him or the other inhabitants, Baka settles under a tree to wait. Before long, Singh comes outside. He invites Baka to drink tea with him and allows the untouchable to handle his items. Singh's disregard for Baka's supposed polluting presence thrills Baka's heart. Thus he is overjoyed when Singh gives him a brand new hockey stick. Ecstatic about this upswing to his terrible day, Baka goes into the hockey game on fire. He scores the first goal. The goalie of the opposite team is angry over Baka's success and hits him. This starts an all-out brawl between the two teams that ends when a high-caste player's younger brother gets hurt. Baka picks up the young boy and rushes him home, only to have the boy's mother accuse him of killing her son. The good mood destroyed, Baka trudges home, where his father screams at him for being gone all afternoon. He banishes Baka from home, saying his son must never return. Baka runs away and takes shelter under a tree far from home. The chief of the local Salvation Army, a British man named Colonel Hutchinson, comes up to him. He sees Baka's distress and convinces Sweeper to follow him to the church. Flattered by the white man's attention, Baka agrees, but the colonel's constant hymn singing quickly bores him. Before the two can enter the church the colonel's wife comes to find him. Disgusted at the sight of her husband with another, Blackie, she begins to scream and shout. Baka feels her anger acutely and runs off again. This time Baka runs towards town and ends up at the train station. He overhears some people discussing the appearance of Mahatma Gandhi in Bulisha. He joins the tide of people rushing to hear the Mahatma speak. Just as Baka settles in to listen, Gandhi arrives and begins his speech. He talks about the plight of the untouchable and how it is his life's mission to see them emancipated. He ends his speech by beseeching those present to spread his message of ending untouchability. After the Mahatma departs, a pair of educated Indian men have a lively discussion about the content of the speech. One man, a lawyer named Bashir, soundly critiques most of Gandhi's opinions and ideas. The other, a poet named Sarshar, defends the Mahatma passionately and convincingly. Much of what they say goes above Baka's head, so elevated are their vocabulary and ideas. However, he does understand when Sarshar mentions the imminent arrival of the flushing toilet in India, a machine that eradicates the need for humans to handle refuse. This machine could mean the end of untouchability. With this piece of hope, Baka hurries home to share news of the Mahatma's speech with his father. Critiques and Interpretations Edit. There is an ongoing debate about the novel's representation of the Daladar, untouchable, community. For Arun P. Mukherjee, for example, the novel has a homogenizing function that focuses on a essentialized natives, resistance, to the colonizer, and fails to fully develop the natives' own ideological agendas. 7. K. M. 
Christopher also suggests that, while Anand certainly subverted literary traditions of the era in Untouchable through its mere subject matter, the novel also perpetuates the perceived homogeneity of Gandhian reformism. Following Foucault, Christopher sees Gandhi as, policing the discourse of untouchability, which Anand arguably perpetuates through literary discourse. 8. Alternatively, Ramachandra Guha argues in the introduction to the Penguin edition of the novel that Anand is ultimately ambivalent about Gandhi's policies, as evidenced by the conversations about public policy at the end of the novel. Ben Conisby Bear notes that Anand carefully frames the novel between 1933 and 1935. The former is inscribed at the end of the novel to mark the time in which it was written, while the latter year is the actual publication. Untouchable is a diasporic anti-colonial novel that aims to contextualize the highly fraught politics of India to an Anglo audience, particularly Bloomsbury. Anand, in trying to establish a counter-connection between colony and metropolis, charts a route which ultimately seeks to reveal what was left out in the 1931 pact between Gandhi and Irwin. 9. Anand himself cites the time he spent at Gandhi's Sabarmati Ashram in 1927 as a source of inspiration for the social protest novel, but he also suggests that by the time he composed Untouchable that he had left, philosophical systems, including humanism, behind. 10. The caste system in India is the paradigmatic ethnographic instance of social classification based on castes. It has its origins in ancient India, and was transformed by various ruling elites in medieval, early modern, and modern India, especially in the aftermath of the collapse of the Mughal Empire and the establishment of the British Raj. 1, 2, 3, 4, it is today the basis of affirmative action programs in India as enforced through its constitution. 5, the caste system consists of two different concepts, Varna and Jati, which may be regarded as different levels of analysis of this system. The caste system as it exists today is thought to be the result of developments during the collapse of the Mughal era and the rise of the British colonial government in India. 1, 6, 7, the British Raj furthered this development, making rigid caste organization a central mechanism of administration. 6, between 1860 and 1920, the British incorporated the Indian caste system into their system of governance, granting administrative jobs and senior appointments only to Christians and people belonging to certain castes. 8, social unrest during the 1920s led to a change in this policy. 9, caste was no longer used by the colonial authority to functionally organize civil society. This reflected changes in administrative practices, understandings of expertise, and the rise of new European scholarly institutions. 10. After the 1920s, the colonial administration began a policy of positive discrimination by reserving a certain percentage of government jobs for the lower castes. In 1948, negative discrimination on the basis of caste was banned by law and further enshrined in the Indian constitution in 1950. 11. However, the system continues to be practiced in parts of India. 5. There are 3,000 castes and 25,000 subcastes in India, each related to a specific occupation. 12. Caste-based differences have also been practiced in other regions and religions in the Indian subcontinent, like Nepalese Buddhism, 13. Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Sikhism. 14. It has been challenged by many reformist Hindu movements, 15. Sikhism, Christianity, 14. And present-day Neo-Buddhism. 16. With Indian influences, the caste system is also practiced in Bali. 17. India after achieving independence in 1947 enacted many affirmative action policies for the upliftment of historically marginalized groups as enforced through its constitution. These policies included reserving a quota of places for these groups in higher education and government employment. Untouchable, by Mulk Raj Anand explores several themes, including caste discrimination. The novel vividly portrays the pervasive discrimination faced by those considered, untouchable, in Indian society. Baka, the protagonist, encounters prejudice and mistreatment solely based on his caste and occupation as a sweeper. An example of this theme can be seen when Baka ridiculed and ostracized by higher caste individuals simply because of his low social status. Dehumanization, Anand highlights the dehumanizing effects of the caste system on individuals like Baka. Despite his inherent humanity and aspirations, Baka is reduced to his caste identity and treated as subhuman by those in higher castes. This dehumanization is evident in the derogatory language and demeaning treatment Baka receives from others. For instance, Baka is often referred to using derogatory terms like, sweeper, or, untouchable, stripping him of his dignity and personhood. Social injustice 
The novel exposes the inherent injustice perpetuated by the caste system, where individuals are marginalized and denied basic human rights based on their birth. An example of social injustice is when Baca is denied access to public facilities and subjected to discriminatory treatment solely because of his caste. Despite his efforts to improve his circumstances, Baca is hindered by systemic barriers that reinforce the rigid caste hierarchy. Quest for Dignity and Equality Through Baca's journey, the novel explores his quest for dignity and equality in a society that denies him these fundamental rights. Despite facing numerous obstacles and setbacks, Baca refuses to accept his oppressed status and strives for a better life. An example of this theme is Baca's aspirations for education and self-improvement, reflecting his desire to transcend the limitations imposed by the caste system and assert his humanity. Social Reform and Resistance Untouchable, advocates for social reform and highlights the importance of challenging oppressive systems to bring about positive change. Baca's experiences serve as a catalyst for raising awareness about caste-based discrimination and mobilizing resistance against social injustice. An example of social resistance is Baca's defiance against oppressive social norms and his refusal to passively accept his marginalized status. These themes intertwine to create a powerful narrative that illuminates the harsh realities of caste-based discrimination while advocating for a more just and equitable society. Here are a few more themes from Untouchable, along with examples. Intersectionality. The novel explores how various intersecting identities, such as caste, religion, and gender, intersect to shape individuals' experiences of oppression and privilege. For instance, Baca's sister Sohini faces both caste and gender discrimination when she is ostracized for her relationship with a Muslim man, highlighting the complex interplay of different forms of oppression. Cycle of Poverty. Anand depicts the cycle of poverty perpetuated by the caste system, wherein individuals like Baca are trapped in a vicious cycle of marginalization and exploitation. Despite his aspirations for a better life, Baca's socioeconomic status and caste identity limit his opportunities for advancement, reinforcing the cycle of poverty. This theme is evident in Baca's struggles to break free from the confines of his caste and improve his circumstances. Humanity and Empathy Amidst the pervasive discrimination and dehumanization, the novel also celebrates moments of humanity and empathy that transcend caste barriers. An example of this theme is Baca's encounter with the Muslim woman, where their shared humanity transcends religious and caste differences, highlighting the potential for compassion and solidarity across social divides. Legacy of Colonialism The novel examines the legacy of colonialism and its role in perpetuating social hierarchies and divisions in Indian society. British colonial policies, such as the segregation of communities based on caste, further entrenched existing social inequalities and exacerbated tensions between different caste groups. This theme is reflected in the oppressive structures and attitudes that Baca and others face in the colonial context. Hope and Resilience Despite the pervasive discrimination and oppression, the novel also conveys a message of hope and resilience in the face of adversity. Baca's resilience and determination to assert his humanity despite the odds reflect the enduring spirit of marginalized communities striving for justice and equality. This theme is evident in Baca's unwavering resolve to challenge the status quo and demand dignity and respect for himself and others like him. These themes contribute to the rich tapestry of Untouchable, offering insights into the complexities of caste-based discrimination and the enduring human quest for dignity, equality, and social justice. Let's delve into a critical analysis of Untouchable by Mulk Raj Anand. Effective Portrayal of Social Realities Anand's novel is lauded for its unflinching portrayal of the harsh realities of caste-based discrimination in colonial India. Through vivid descriptions and powerful imagery, Anand captures the dehumanizing effects of the caste system on individuals like Baka, shedding light on the pervasive injustice and inequality that marginalized communities face. By immersing readers in Baca's world, Anand compels them to confront uncomfortable truths about the social hierarchy and systemic oppression. Exploration of Intersectionality Untouchable explores the intersectionality of caste, religion, and gender, offering a nuanced understanding of how multiple forms of oppression intersect to shape individuals' experiences. Anand skillfully weaves together these intersecting identities to illustrate the complex dynamics of power and privilege in Indian society. Through characters like Sohini, who faces discrimination based on both caste and gender, Anand highlights the interconnectedness of different forms of discrimination and their cumulative impact on marginalized individuals. Critique of Colonialism and Social Structures 
The novel offers a critique of British colonialism and its role in perpetuating and exacerbating social inequalities in India. Anand exposes the oppressive structures and attitudes imposed by colonial rulers, such as the segregation of communities based on caste, which further entrenched existing hierarchies and divisions. By contextualizing Baka's struggles within the colonial context, Anand highlights the complicity of colonial powers in perpetuating caste-based discrimination and exploitation. Humanization of marginalized characters Anand humanizes marginalized characters like Baka, challenging stereotypes and portraying them as complex individuals with hopes, dreams, and agency. Despite facing evasive discrimination and oppression, Baka emerges as a resilient and determined protagonist who refuses to be defined solely by his caste identity. Anand's portrayal of Baka's inner thoughts and struggles fosters empathy and understanding, compelling readers to confront their own biases and preconceptions about marginalized communities. Call to Action for Social Reform Untouchable serves as a powerful call to action for social reform and justice. Through Baka's journey and experiences, Anand advocates for the eradication of the caste system and the establishment of a more equitable and inclusive society. By shining a spotlight on the injustices faced by untouchables and other marginalized groups, Anand urges readers to challenge oppressive systems and work towards building a society based on principles of dignity, equality, and social justice. Overall, Untouchable is a poignant and thought-provoking novel that continues to resonate with readers for its incisive critique of caste-based discrimination and its impassioned plea for social reform. Anand's masterful storytelling and insightful analysis make Untouchable a timeless classic that remains relevant in contemporary discussions about social justice and equality. Let's break down Untouchable by Mulk Raj Anand across various narrative elements. Narrative Technique Anand employs a straightforward and realistic narrative technique, focusing on depicting the everyday experiences of Baka and other characters. The narrative is characterized by its close third-person perspective, allowing readers to immerse themselves in Baka's thoughts, feelings, and experiences. Anand's descriptive prose vividly captures the sights, sounds, and smells of Baka's environment, enhancing the reader's sense of immersion in the story. Plot The plot of, Untouchable, revolves around a single day in the life of Baka, a young sweeper from the untouchable caste. Through a series of interconnected events and encounters, the novel explores themes of caste discrimination, social injustice, and human dignity. The plot unfolds organically as Baka navigates his interactions with various characters and grapples with the challenges posed by his low social status. Style Anand's writing style in, Untouchable, is characterized by its simplicity, clarity, and emotional resonance. The language is accessible yet powerful, allowing Anand to convey complex ideas and emotions with clarity and precision. Anand employs vivid imagery and sensory detail to evoke the sights, sounds, and smells of Baka's world, immersing readers in the setting and atmosphere of the novel. Genre Untouchable can be categorized as a social realist novel, a genre that seeks to depict the social realities and struggles of marginalized communities. The novel combines elements of social commentary, character study, and building's Roman coming-of-age story to explore the complexities of caste-based discrimination in colonial India. While the novel addresses serious social issues, it also contains elements of empathy, humor, and humanity that add depth and richness to the narrative. Setting The novel is set in colonial India during the early 20th century, against the backdrop of British rule and the rigid caste system. The setting plays a crucial role in shaping the characters' experiences and interactions, as they navigate the complexities of social hierarchy and colonial oppression. The physical setting encompasses both rural and urban landscapes, from the bustling streets of the city to the quiet villages of the countryside, providing a rich tapestry against which the story unfolds. Dialogue Anand's use of dialogue in, Untouchable, is sparing but effective, serving to illuminate character dynamics, convey social attitudes, and propel the plot forward. The dialogue is realistic and colloquial, reflecting the speech patterns and dialects of the characters. Through dialogue, Anand captures the nuances of caste-based interactions and the power dynamics at play, revealing the prejudices, biases, and aspirations of the characters. Overall, Untouchable demonstrates Anand's mastery of narrative technique, plot construction, style, genre conventions, setting, and dialogue, resulting in a compelling and thought-provoking work of literature. Untouchable, by Mulk Raj Anand holds significant relevance, leaving a lasting legacy and making substantial contributions to literature and society. 
Here's a breakdown of its significance, relevance, legacy, contribution, and impact. Social relevance. The novel addresses the pervasive issue of caste discrimination in Indian society, shedding light on the struggles faced by those considered untouchable. Its exploration of social injustice and inequality remains relevant today, sparking conversations about caste-based discrimination and the need for social reform. Legacy in Literature Untouchable is considered a seminal work in Indian literature, pioneering the genre of social realism and influencing subsequent generations of writers. Its powerful portrayal of social issues and marginalized communities has left an indelible mark on Indian literary canon, inspiring writers to tackle similar themes in their own works. Contribution to Social Reform The novel played a significant role in raising awareness about caste-based discrimination and advocating for social reform in Indian society. By humanizing characters like Baka and depicting their struggles with empathy and compassion, Anand challenged societal norms and inspired readers to confront their own biases and prejudices. Impact on Readers Untouchable has had a profound impact on readers, sparking empathy, introspection, and calls to action. Its portrayal of the dehumanizing effects of caste-based discrimination resonates with readers from diverse backgrounds, fostering greater understanding and solidarity across social divides. Global Influence The themes explored in Untouchable transcend geographical and cultural boundaries, resonating with readers around the world. The novel's universal themes of social justice, equality, and human dignity have contributed to its enduring popularity and continued relevance in global literary discourse. Educational Value Untouchable is widely taught in academic settings, both in India and internationally, as a means of exploring complex social issues and historical contexts. Its inclusion in school curricula and university syllabi ensures that future generations continue to engage with its themes and messages. Inspiration for Activism The novel has inspired activists and social justice movements to advocate for the rights of marginalized communities and challenge oppressive systems. Its message of resilience, resistance, and hope continues to inspire individuals and organizations working towards a more just and equitable society. Overall, Untouchable remains a timeless classic that continues to resonate with readers for its powerful storytelling, social relevance, and enduring message of dignity, equality, and human rights. Its legacy as a pioneering work of literature and catalyst for social change ensures its continued significance in the literary landscape and beyond. Mulk Raj Anand, born on December 12, 1905, in Peshawar, now in Pakistan, and passing away on September 28, 2004, in Pune, India, was a prolific Indian writer renowned for his contributions to literature, particularly in highlighting social issues and advocating for social reform. Anand was born into a Punjabi family and spent his early years in Punjab. He later moved to England, where he pursued higher education and became involved in the literary and intellectual circles of London. Anand's experiences growing up in India, coupled with his exposure to Western literature and progressive ideologies, profoundly influenced his writing. He was deeply committed to addressing social injustices and championing the cause of the marginalized, particularly the Dalits formerly known as untouchables, in Indian society. Anand's works often depicted the struggles and aspirations of individuals from lower castes, shedding light on the dehumanizing effects of caste discrimination and the quest for dignity and equality. Untouchable, is one of Anand's most notable works and is often considered a seminal text in Dalit literature. As a Dalit literature, it holds significant importance for several reasons. Representation of Dalit experience. Untouchable, provides a rare and authentic portrayal of the lived experiences of Dalits in colonial India. Through the character of Baka, Anand exposes the social, economic, and psychological hardships faced by those relegated to the lowest rungs of the caste hierarchy. The novel serves as a powerful testimony to the resilience, courage, and humanity of Dalit communities in the face of systemic oppression. Critique of Caste System Anand's depiction of the caste system in Untouchable is scathing and unapologetic. He exposes the inherent injustices and cruelties perpetuated by the caste system, challenging readers to confront the moral implications of caste-based discrimination. By shining a spotlight on the dehumanizing effects of caste hierarchy, Anand advocates for the eradication of caste-based oppression and the establishment of a more egalitarian society. Empowerment through literature. Untouchable empowers Dalit communities by providing them with a voice and representation in literature. 
Through Baka's narrative, Anand affirms the dignity and humanity of Dalit individuals, countering stereotypes and misconceptions perpetuated by dominant caste narratives. The novel serves as a source of validation and empowerment for Dalit readers, inspiring a sense of pride in their identity and heritage. Advocacy for Social Reform Anand's writing transcends mere storytelling, it serves as a catalyst for social change.